We're honored to have the Bishop of the Catholic Church here in Hawaii, Bishop Larry Silva. Let's give him a warm applause. Aloha. It is great to see so many people here with such uh, enthusiasm for this cause of preserving life, of uh, thanking God for this gift of life so that uh, we can continue to share it with others. About uh, a week or two ago, I was struck by a news story on uh, television about uh, six puppies that had been abandoned in a dumpster at the Waianae Boat Harbor. And someone found these puppies before they died. And of course, there was great grief over uh, the, somebody that could be so inhumane as to put six healthy puppies into a dumpster to let them die. There were tears, there was uh, talk about finding out who had done such a thing to go after them and bring them to justice. And I thought, that's right. It is, it is not a good thing to do away with such beautiful gifts of life as these puppies. And yet, it, the disconnect was so obvious to me that we give so much attention to these puppies and perhaps not quite as much attention even to our fellow human beings in the womb. Our fellow human beings who are vulnerable. Our fellow human beings who are at the point of death and need our support and our care and our love. Now, let us be realistic. If I had a dog that gave birth to six puppies, I might very well want to get rid of those six puppies too, okay? Because taking care of them is a lot of trouble. It's a lot of work. You have to, you know, pen them in and make sure that they don't get into where they shouldn't be. You have to uh, feed them. You have to house train them. You have to uh, play with them. You have to do all kinds of things that take time and energy, and I can understand very well that someone would say, I really can't do this. So I'm going to get rid of these puppies, I'm going to put them in the dumpster. I can understand that, even though it is obviously an inhumane thing to do. And it also scares me when I think of that, because when we come here to, to uh, uh, show our support for life in all of its stages, we have to be careful what we're saying. Because this can commit us to things that we might rather not do. You know, it might commit us to something that would be more troublesome than caring for six little puppies. Now, why do women get abortions? Because children, as much of a blessing as they are, are something that take a lot of trouble, a lot of care. And so, perhaps, you know, our hearts can go out to those who are in a situation where they don't know how they're going to take care of this child. And so, what makes it difficult for us, what makes uh, us perhaps gulp a little bit as we gather here to, uh, to say how much we respect life, is that we may then have to engage ourselves as members of a, a wider community to support people who are in crisis pregnancies, to support children uh, whose parents don't know how they're going to raise them. And so that means uh, not only supporting pro-life legislation, 
and uh, doing all that's needed to uh, uh, promote that, that in itself is a tremendous job. And we thank our uh, pro-life legislators and civil servants here. Let's give them a round of applause. Because it's not an easy task for them to go against the grain. But perhaps even more is demanded of us to open our homes to a child in adoption, or in, at least in foster care, to share our resources with uh, programs that help uh, women who are, uh, in, who are afraid about having another child, so that they can be supported and counseled not to give up that child, but to let that child live and know that there are resources that can help them. And then we need to be those resources. We need to put our money and our time and our love at the disposal of all those who are in need. And so it really, in a sense, is easy for us to be here to carry a sign and say, I am pro-life and I am against abortion and against assisted suicide. It's easy for us to do those things. To vote, to inform ourselves, to speak with our legislators, that's not so easy. To open our hearts and our doors, perhaps, to a woman or a child in need, that's not so easy. To uh, support programs that support women in crisis and families in crisis. That's not so easy. And yet, we come here asking the Lord to convict our hearts so that we can open them, so that we can dedicate ourselves even more fully to do all that is needed so that uh, the, the market for abortion will disappear because people will no longer be afraid that they have no way out, that they have no way to deal with this child who uh, that they did not expect or they do not want. That they will know that there are those who can take care of that child and love that child and or support them in taking care of and loving that child. And so, our rally here is just for a few hours, and yet our commitment must be beyond that. It must be a daily commitment. It must be a yearly commitment. A commitment that's more difficult than taking care of six little puppies. And so we ask the Lord to give us the strength, to give us the wisdom, and together, as one family in this community of Hawaii, to work together to put all of our resources at the disposal of those who are in need so that we can truly say that we are pro-life. God bless you all. It's a man with uh, a heart of Christ and a gentle spirit.